Hi and blessed be, this is the Zen Witch with another Unboxing the Classics video. Today I am going to be looking at a beautiful deck. Uh, come on. Known as Daughters of the Moon. If you look at my playlist, my unboxing playlist, you will see a video on the Motherpiece deck, which was the first round format deck. Daughters of the Moon was the second round format deck. And in the book, um, the author says that they were conceived at the same time. Motherpiece um, was uh, hit print in 1981, and this hit print um, in 84, copyright 84. And this was published by, oh, they're going to make me dig for it apparently. Um, I don't know. I think this is self-published. It's just Daughters of the Moon. So we don't have a mainstream publisher on this deck. But boy, the copyrights are 84, 86, 88, 90, 91, 92, 94, 95, 97, 98, and 2000. So dang, yes, published by Daughters of the Moon. So it is a self-published deck from way back when. And, you know, congratulations, women, for getting this out there when it was difficult to do. Um, there, it, it is uh, by Fiona Morgan, is the author. She has a lot of thanks going out to a lot of different people. And let's get into the artwork. So you see, I'm gonna turn it this way because that is a waxing crescent moon. The goddess's sweet smile. So, the dreamer is the fool card. The magician is the witch. So you can see, if you've looked at Mother Piece before, that this is an even more strongly um, feminist deck. I would say strongly Dianic deck. Uh, Mother Piece is still balanced um, gender. This deck is much more um, Dianic in meaning uh, weighted on the feminine side of things. The witch, uh, the priestess is Isis. And you see some cards, like this one just says the witch on the bottom here. This one says the priestess for the high priestess card, but it also says Isis up there. So there's a goddess that goes with it. This one is the empress. It's Mawu. It doesn't say empress on it. It just says Mawu, giving birth on the back of an elephant. Try that. And then we have Aphrodite, the lovers. So, you know, inconsistencies, because with some we have Isis up here, and then the, the card, and then the, that last one we just had a... Um, only the goddess's name and not anything else. And now we have the goddess and the card, Aphrodite, the lovers. And as you see, the lovers are two women with some very feminine artwork around. And then we have another lover's card, which is kind of gender neutral. It's difficult to tell if either one of the, you know, either one of them, whether they're male or female. This one certainly has a more male look that has a more female, but that one might have breasts, you know. So we, we definitely are busting some gender norms here, and I love that, especially way back in the 80s. Um, the Amazon is the chariot card. There's strength. This is the crone or the wise one. Spider woman. Life weaver up at the top here. Mat, the Egyptian goddess that weighs hearts at the end of life. Reversal for the hanged man. The phoenix. That's the death card. Temperance. Talking about balance and blending of energy. So very evocative images here. You know, temperance shows an angel pouring liquid from one vessel into another. And it's... Um, talks about balance and assimilation. So, so the blending of energies and, and the um, incorporating life lessons, sort of assimilating life lessons. So that's very evocative there. Oppression. Pan, in the place of the devil card we have. So this is one, you know, absolutely masculine. Pan is masculine. Coyote Woman is Trickster. We have Kali the Awakener. Hell yeah. That would be the Judgment card. 
Um, there's the star. No, that would be the tower card there. The star. The moon. Yamaya. I have to keep looking to see if I'm missing things at the top. The sun is Amaterasu, Japanese sun goddess. So in Japan, uh, the sun is feminine and the moon is masculine. Celebration, there's the world. Actually, no, that's not the world. See, it, de it, it de definitely busts the normal tarot um, format here. And Shakti, life dancer. She's wonderful, too. Then we have the suits. There's the one of flames. So the flames correspond to wands in this deck, I do believe. But it, it doesn't really forget those correspondences. When something busts the system, then rather than trying to reference the system all the time, take the tool on its own merits. Take it within its own system, and you're going to have much more success with it. So flames. One of flames. Two of flames is Mahuea. Uh, three of flames is loyalty. Four of flames, conflict. Five of flames, Pele. Look at that. Yeah. Very evocative. Six of flames, Basht. Bashtet is the Egyptian goddess of play. And it says Basht, play. <laughs> Seven of flames is victory. So, okay. No, that's not a correlation. Stop that. Eight of Flames is Burnout. That's an excellent card. So very evocative. And if you looked at my Mother Piece um, video, I never used Mother Piece a lot. It never really s spoke to my intuitive mind that much. But this one, oh, hell yeah. Nine of Flames is The Wanderer. Ten, The Hora, which is a, um, a Hebrew, a dance, a Jewish dance, traditional. Maiden, so here we are into the court cards, the Maiden of Flames, Aries, is Calafia. So um, the suits are broken into um, the signs. So we've got four suits. That means there's going to be three each since this is a goddess deck. Triple goddess, Maid Mother Crone, right? So the Maiden of Flames is Aries, which is the first fire sign, Calafia. Um, the Mother of Flames is Leo, the second fire sign, which is Chantico. And the Crone of Flames is Sagittarius or Caridwen. So you've got great correspondences here. You've got the element, you've got um, the sign, and you've got goddesses. Lots of stuff to draw on. Here's One of Cups. Look at that glorious image. I mean, how can you not feel what that card means? You can't. You can't not. One of Cups is Happiness. Two of Cups, Whirlpool. Ooh, swirling down the drain. Like I said, how can you not feel what that card is saying? Three of Cups is bonding. Four, sorrow. Five, the storm. So I like this. This is more internal. You know, this is sorrow. This is external. Stuff is really sweeping you away. Six, compassion. Seven, jealousy. Ooh, yeah. Eight is withdrawal. Nine is Kuan Yin. So goddesses kind of pop up at random here. But again, an absolutely beautiful image for the goddess of compassion. Ten of Cups, ecstasy, Inanna's house of heaven. And look at that ritual in a pond under a waterfall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're into the court cards, so we're into the astrological signs again. The Maiden of Cups is not the first water sign. It's Pisces, the last water sign. So the Maiden of Cups is Mami Watu, the mermaid. The Mother of Cups is Cancer, which is the first water sign, Namu. The Crone of Cups is Scorpio, Hecate. Then we are into blades. So we don't really have the four elements here. We've got flames, we've got cups, we've got blades. So the flames do correspond to wands then. So here's blades. One of blades is the sibyl. Two is moo. Moo. Analysis. 
discernment. So they are corresponding, like I said, the flames are wands, so this is air. And boy, I will do a separate video on wands and blades and fire and air, because I have a strong opinion there. Um, three of blades is focus. Four is deception. Now we finally get a blindfold card, but it's not the two, it's the four. Five of blades, the hurricane. So we had a storm, now we got a freaking hurricane. Can you imagine getting those two together? Six of blades is manipulation. Seven, meditation. Eight, hokma decisions. Hokma is one of the um, Sephiroth in the uh, Kabbalah. Nine of blades is criticism. Ten of blades, the rattle. So this is a way big departure from the standard Tarot images, which Ten of Blades is usually showing um, downfall and ruin and, you know, things hitting rock bottom. This looks more like a council meeting. And that's what the rattle talks about, is passing the rattle there. Okay, Maiden of Blades is Gemini, so yes, the first of the air signs. So there are inconsistencies, but you know, when you're creating a deck like this, it's coming out of your own intuitive mind and your connection with the collective consciousness so you know no fault given there again take tools of on their in their own context to have the best success with them so this is Hina the maiden of blades Gemini mother of blades is Libra Scotty the north wind and crone of blades is Aquarius Ichel eagle woman then we're on to uh, Pentacles. So we've got, I, hard to read on dark blue, Nuqua is the one of Pentacles. Bull Leapers in Balance, that's two of Pentacles. Three is Aruru, Clay Woman. Many cultures here. Four of Pentacles is Security. Five, Earthquake. Six, success and I love that we are looking at non-traditional images of women hairy armpits and we are also looking at people um, who use assistive devices so talk about ahead of its time seven of pentacles is appraisal eight is the learner nine of pentacles malama Ten, the harvest. That's a wonderful image. And again, you've got, you know, some um, different images of gender there that are so very needed. Maiden of Pentacles is Virgo. Not, that's the second earth sign. Uh, Lada is her name. She's an Eastern European goddess. The mother of Pentacles, Taurus, is the great corn mother out of Native American tradition. And the crone of Pentacles is Capricorn, which is Pasoe, Buffalo Woman, White Buffalo Woman. And then we're back to the Dreamer again. So it's really a wonderful deck. Um, there's so, so much here. It's rich. It's rich. It's luscious. The colors are gorgeous. Um, let's go to the book. And the book looks so spanking new because I had to buy a new one um, several years ago because somebody swiped one of mine from a mother drum circle, which you want to talk about bad karma, swiping a book from a priestess at a ritual. Mm, don't know who that was, but they sure do. So anyway, um, and I, just a word about karma, not that I lift a finger in anything like that. Karma takes care of things all in her own. So, um, so here are all the illustrators. Now uh, it's by Fiona Morgan, but all or all artwork visioned and designed by Fiona Morgan. So she was requesting these images and saying, here's what I want in them. But the artists, Kate Taylor, Lily Hill, um, Jean Chavez, Ellen Fishburne, Jean Van Slyke, Jennifer Weston, Jerry Joe Idarius, Fiona Morgan, Max Dashu, Lyndon Burke, Meredith Voltz, Susan Stacy, Tara Candage, and Rainbow. And the actual paintings, are it's illustrators in order of contribution, and then the actual paintings by... So they were illustrated and then somebody painted them. Fiona Morgan, Diane Nelson, um, Renate Skye, Judith Hauer, and Jennifer Leach. Original creation, a matriarchal tarot by Fiona 
and Shekinah Mountain Water. So Shekinah Mountain Water is another of those names um, from the beginnings of the modern craft that should resonate if you've been around as long as I have. Okay, um, and there are contributors here. It's the result of many women's dreams, art, words, and labors, and they spell it W O. M Y N, and that has always bugged me the different spelling of woman in order to remove it from man. But you know, my point has always been man, if you're looking at just the words, is the diminutive of woman. Man is contained in woman, not the other way around. So I just spell it straight up woman. Um, okay, the text is by Fiona Morgan and Shakina Mountain Water, rewritten and edited by Fiona. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody named Mishwa did the original Yamaya painting, and Daughters of the Moon was patterned after that. Or inspiration for Aphrodite, the lovers, the lesbian version painting from a photograph by T. Corinne. So she gives great um, um, credit where it's due. And then thanks to Merlin Stone, another great original author in the early days of um, goddess research and um, spirituality. Merlin Stone for her great knowledge, especially writings on Nukwa, Ishel, Mawu, Pele, Shakti, Mat, Spider Woman, Pasui, and Scotty. So lots and lots and lots of information there. And um, how to do a reading, talking about the shape of the cards. So let's read this. Other tarot, except for Mother Peace, which coincidentally were conceived at the same time as Daughters of the Moon, were rectangular and had positive meanings when upright and negative when reversed. When this mode is examined carefully, one can see that this requires thinking in duality or opposition, a concept developed by the patriarchal either-or mind, black and white, as opposition such as day and night is created by separating night from day and placing them in opposition. The feminist or holistic approach envisions day and night as peaks in a connected whole or cycle, as they are. You know, it's not like you flip a switch. They, we go through twilight and we go through dawn and we go through all the whole cycle there. Same thing with life and death, y'all. Um, okay, if we apply this approach to other f familiar dualities such as self, other, old, young, spirit, matter, life, death, we observe how differently reality can appear. The more holistic approach is possible with round cards. Each image appears as a cycle of energy with varying gradations of positive and negative, blending in and out of one another. For example, the Five of Cups, the storm, is concerned with intensely troubled water or difficulty in the emotional arena. It can indicate a crisis or an opportunity for growth or both in variations and degrees depending on the position. Daughters of the Moon hopes to bring a new consciousness of circles and cycles with the creation of round cards. I believe it is important to begin thinking circularly, as did our foremothers who performed rituals in the stone circles. And ritual is done in a circle, not a square. Um, one of the things I do, if, I, if I'm ever presenting somewhere or doing, I mean, anything, teaching anywhere, I typically get to a space and the first thing I do is rearrange the furniture out of rows and into a circle because a row, rows indicate I'm up here, you're over there, there's this dividing line between us, everybody's looking at me or the back of somebody's head, including me, and um, and that's that, you know, you're there, I'm here, and everybody's not, con you know, connecting with each other. So I will rearrange the furniture and put things in a circle because everybody's equal in the circle. But things are so ingrained. I, what, one of the first things I notice is uh, like when I'm leading Dances of Universal Peace, I will be standing and we get into a circle and I will notice that people leave a big gap on either side of me. This could be because they just want to be able to see me when I'm talking, you know, but um, I think we're just so ingrained in that the teacher is separate from the student's thing and I'm not down with that at all so in a circle rituals performed in circle because everyone is equal and plus you can see everybody else in the circle you know we're making eye contact with each other it's definitely more conducive to group mind and if you're singing to sing in rows you're hearing everybody that's behind you you know um, when you're in a circle all the voices are coming into the center and it's a much more pleasing uh, thing to be a part of. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to like shuffle and pick a card or anything, but I hope you enjoyed looking at that. This deck is out of print. So good luck finding it. Check a Libris as I always do. Um, dangerous place. 
but it's it's a beautiful deck and well worth having and of the two round decks mother piece and daughters of the moon i have to say daughters of the moon really resonates much more strongly to me than mother piece the images there are they just don't vibe with me not that they won't for somebody else but they don't vibe with me that well so again thank you for sticking around uh, this is the zen witch like and subscribe please share around drop a comment if there's a particular deck that you would like me to review if i don't have it i'll get it and i will see you the next time thanks for watching blessed be